Hey guys, Buffer Game Bad today bringing out a video, and today we have a Warzone Rebirth Resurgence Solo match. I'm going to show you with the ASM Val. So this is a brand new ASM Val build that I covered a little bit briefly in my off-meta build uh, weapon video yesterday. And this build, I finally had a pretty decent game with this thing. I've been getting some good footage with this. It's actually a lot of fun to use. Definitely a build that I've never used before, which is the whole purpose of Rebirth. Try and use crazy Modern Warfare weapon builds that are tactical and somewhat viable that you typically wouldn't get away with on, obviously, uh, something like Caldera. So, on this map, this AS Val build is actually uh, very viable because of the barrel option that we're going to be using here. It will allow us to stretch out the range and have the optic to match that range, as well as have very close quarters combat abilities as well, which you'll see. We have a pretty crazy finish here. I got lucky a little bit here and there. Definitely a pretty interesting match. Ended up with a 9-kill solo win here. Nothing insane, but still a really good solo win. Crazy day overall with Rebirth Resurgence. I think I ended up uh, having a total of 7 or 8 wins, and I think 5 of those were with Gilly. 5 or 6 of those were with Gilly. So, had a really good game. Had a couple solo wins as well, so I got some good footage here. Making some videos out of these. But we'll go ahead and jump into it now. Just back out the AS Val build that I'm going to be using here. Strip this thing down to base. Barrel, we're going to be running the 200mm OSA barrel for the damage at range and the bullet velocity increase. Gives us that integral monolithic suppressor. Now for the laser option. Odd one here, but I'm going to run the 5 milliwatt laser. Just in case I do get caught in a close quarter situation where I need to hip fire, it'll give me a little bit of advantage there with the AS Val, with the hip fire accuracy and the sprint to fire speed. Con is obviously... When we are idle, uh, walking, standing, that laser will be visible, but if we ADS, it'll go away, and if we're, we're moving, obviously, it typically won't be uh, too viable. Just don't let that laser peek through doors, things like that, when you're standing still, and you'll be okay. Next up for the optic. Now, this is the odd one, which we're going to pair here. It goes really well with the barrel option here. Typically, I would use something like a uh, holographic or even the Viper Reflex or even no optic, but this is a very odd choice here, but I'm going to use the hammer sight or the integral hybrid optic here for that reflex and scout toggle. We have that 3.25 optic as well as the top mounted delta point for that red dot, and then we have the cons or the ADS speed, which really not too big of a deal. We, the ADS speed is uh, very good on this particular build, so you won't notice that at all. Go ahead and select that. We'll leave the base stock, however, an option here would be the Strelex stock. You could do that if you wanted increased recoil control, but I think the mobility uh, decrease with this probably is not worth it, and I just run with the base barrel. Skip out on the perk and the rear grip. We're going to go ahead and run the 30-round magazine of that 9x39 with the SP5 or the SP6 ammunition that this comes with at base. And then for the underbarrel option here, you could definitely go with a Merc foregrip if you really plan on hip firing this for the most part, or having better close quarters accuracy. Ranger foregrip is obviously probably going to add a little bit more stability at those longer ranges, but I've always found the operator foregrip works really well with this particular build. Uh, and for some reason, I think I believe it gives me better accuracy than the other grips. When I originally tested this when the weapon first came out, this was the uh, the grip that gave you the best recoil control. That could have changed by now, but again, regardless, you don't have the mobility decrease with this particular foregrip versus the other one. So this will give us the recoil control. Con is the ADS speed. Again, you're not going to notice that at all. It's negligible. Go ahead and select that. And then for the camouflage, we'll leave it blank. And the reticle, going to run that blue uh, blue triangle with the red dot on the top mounted delta. It's a really good optic here, and I'm having a good time with that on pretty much all my weapons right now, now that I have unlocked it. So, this is our ASM Val build. Again, M being AS modernized, so the AS Val, M for modernized Val, obviously given that we have that barrel on there is why I'm calling it that. But still, at base, your AS Val, firing 9x39. Go ahead and back out. The other weapon you'll see me running here, which I don't think I do get any kills with and barely use, is going to be the AN-94 Abacon. Just running the standard monolithic suppressor, the longest in-slot barrel for the Factory X 438mm. Going to run that TAC laser, that PEC-15 on the right-hand side of the weapon for that Picatinny rail. Going to run the Alcan or the Scout Combat Optic on there for that 3.25 uh, time zoom. And then a range of foregrip on this. You can definitely swap this out with the Commando foregrip. I think it's really good as well. But because I'm running solos, um, I'm opting for a tack laser over the magazine. Typically, I'd probably swap that out for a 45 round or even a 60, depending on what I'm playing, how many modes. But with the um, 
with solos, you can definitely get away with 30 rounds here. Unfortunately, it just didn't get in any situations where this was uh, able to be used. Um, everything was either really close quarters or I ended up dying in, in some instances, which you'll see here. So that's the ASM Val build. I'm going to be running this with our Shadow Company operator here. You'll see in the gameplay here just to kind of fit that because the Shadow Company kind of has uh, no allegiance to mercenaries. So we can pretend this is kind of like a... Uh, a uh, Spetsnaz for hire for the most part or you could obviously run this with Bale But go ahead. I'm probably gonna leave you with most of the gameplay here. I think it's a pretty good game There's no commentary in the gameplay. Obviously. I have my mic off because it's just solo uh, Gameplay here, so there's no you know comms. It's gonna be raw gameplay cycling through this for the most part But again a really good game here and a little bit of a slow start for them for some of it So I'll probably cut through a little bit of that uh, I ended up getting my loadout pretty early, getting one kill down at Stronghold, and then dying. Unfortunate, as soon as I got my ghost loadout, some guy parachuted on me, and I just was not prepared. Uh, I got shots on him, but it just he just had the, the jump on me, unfortunately, so it just didn't work out well. But I was able to come back, um, pick up a proxy mine, get in living quarters, and set a nice trap there for a guy who I ended up killing him, I think, three times in a row, because for some reason... This dude just kept coming back, so good on him for trying, but I got him with the, the same trick twice in a row, I believe, and I think I killed him three times, so go ahead and check that out. It's a good spot to put uh, landmines and um, claymores on living quarters. Now, again, this obviously, it's not, not trying to camp. I just don't have my loadout here, so if this guy's going to be pushing me and he had his gear to begin with and he got his gear the second time also... Uh, you know, I need to be prepared. That's not a gunfight I can take when I don't have full plates. So I need to make sure I have something set up to uh, kill him. And he, again, like I said, he came back three... I killed him three times. He came back twice in a row at me. He almost got me the last time, but I was able to get him. Um, definitely sucks for that guy, but good try for him. Once I was able to finally go get my loadout again from where I died, because like I said, I had gotten my ghost loadout and gotten killed, so I don't have any more free loadout drops, so I had to basically leave living quarters after there was another guy there, get down to my loadout, circle uh, back up using, thankfully, the redeploy balloon helped me out a lot here, and you'll see that. I make a uh, last stand over at headquarters where I almost die, and then it's a pretty insane ending, um, and you'll see this Val in use again. Utilizing that 3.25 optic for some reason just feels really, really good when you're getting those medium range kills, and then you can use that top mount of Delta uh, when you need to. Now, just a quick update as far as the Modern Warfare Weapon Whistlers content. We'll have part six out probably uh, by either tomorrow or Saturday. That'll be covering all of the launchers as well as different miscellaneous weapons that I may have missed over. But for the most part, will be launchers. And then if you have something that maybe I missed that you want to see, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and I'll take a look at it and potentially add it to that video, but there's a few things I think I, I left out, so I'll go back through and get that list and put it in that video as well. And then we're gonna start our, kind of our operator milsim type wishlist video for the bundles, things like Ukrainian Special Forces, uh, different faction packs for different countries and weapons and operators, things like that I think would be a really good thing to see in Modern Warfare 2, since it is going to have two years of support. I think we'll see a lot of things recycled from the original Modern Warfare 2, but there's definitely so much potential with this game and with Warzone 2 to see these types of uh, bundles coming in. It's really unfortunate that support for Modern Warfare got cut. Obviously, they had the other two games that were coming out, so we were pretty fortunate to get it for the length of time we did, but now that they're not going to be releasing a Call of Duty game in 2023, we will have two years of Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 support from Infinity War. So that'll be really good. Really excited to see what that's going to look like. And we'll be covering kind of that wish list in the future here. But let me know what you guys think of this solo gameplay. Again, really good. I had a seven or eight wins today. Got some good good videos with some very off wep meta weapons. And um, definitely another one I'll be bringing you in the next few days with the G36, which was amazingly... It was very surprising how viable it was and actually just dominant it, I was with the G36. So that video will be coming later on this week, potentially over the weekend sometime or early next week. Let me know what you guys think down below. Till next time, this is Buffner Gaming. Out.
This is moving. 